All right, friends, let's start laying down. So we got shoulder blades really pressed onto the mat. We might have a bend in the knees, who knows? But just get comfortable, take some time here. Find a big breath in, out. Expansive inhale and strong, complete exhales. We want to imagine being a little more free and expansive, especially in the front of the body with each inhale. And exhale, we want to think of cleaning out the lungs completely, drawing the belly button in toward the spine. So all that strong tissue that wraps around the middle compresses inward. Drag the breath out, maybe a second longer than when you started. And cultivate a roar breath, a roaring sound in your ears, maybe dragging the breath a little bit in your throat. Cultivating that ujjayi breath, a victorious breath is also a warming breath. as well as a calming breath. Always hearing that sound in your ears. I think of it as a wave sound. It sounds like waves coming in and out. Very calming breath. Hopefully you feel the difference in just this past minute of breathing. Hopefully you feel more present, more grounded. Continue to breathe, maybe stretching out the breath a second longer every now and then. Maybe growing it into a six or seven, eight count inhale. And then the same for the exhale. Notice your body letting go here. See if you could release all effort just for a little while. Notice where it's difficult to release the effort. And this is where we really get shown where we collect our tension and we collect our stress. So without judging your body or trying to change it right now, soften as much as you can. And just notice where it's very challenging. So you might feel like your hips, okay? Your belly maybe has a hard time letting go, your glutes. We tend to collect a lot of our effort in there. Notice especially between your shoulders and the front, so your big chest expands. You might have trouble letting go there. Who knows, your jaw, check there. Anywhere you notice, and then notice particularly left to right, are there differences? Perhaps if you are right-handed, you notice you tend to curl your right shoulder inward a little bit, okay? Almost like you're protecting yourself from the demands of the demanding world. And that's something that we humans do when we're stressed. We roll our shoulders inward to protect ourselves, okay? So here on the mat, you are safe. Breathe deeply into the places that you lock up. 
And let's start to stretch out a little bit. So reach out your hands, reach out your toes. So make yourself as long as you can be. Take out the maximum amount of length here. And see if you could make your spine maybe a centimeter longer by wiggling your shoulders away from your hips. Nice deep breath here. Let's take this length more into the right side of the body. See if you could lengthen more through your right side, contracting a little bit in your left to help out. So think about kind of hiking your left hip a little closer to your left armpit. And then wrap the belly button down toward the floor. Breathe deeply here, extra space in the right. And you can keep walking your hands and feet out, okay? Make it really open up. Maybe one more breath here. And let's come through center. Now lengthening through the left side a lot more, contracting in the right, okay? Pull that belly button down. Breathe deeply. Find that opening in the left side. If you're left-handed, maybe make a little extra curvature here to let go even more. Remember the belly's not popping up, okay? We're pulling that low back down. Let's bring this back into center and let's get a little bit warm in your core, okay? So here we go. We're going to plant the feet by the hips, plant your hands by your hips and we'll just start with some bridges and we'll kind of mix it up from there. So remember, before you come up into your bridge, you want a strong, engaged lower body. So ground into your feet, try to drag your legs toward each other while preserving a little bit of space, a tennis ball, okay? Inhaling, hips up, nose points up, so the back of the neck is very soft and neutral. And exhale, hips down. Okay, so let's just start off here. This will be our our first opportunity to really link movement with breath. And I like to think of trying to fit the breath into the movement rather than vice versa. We let the breath rule our mat time experience. Breath is in control. Okay, as you move, notice the knees tend to want to waggle apart from each other. Pull them inward, control the distance between them. I'm beginning to feel that back body warm up. Remember to keep your spine long. Okay, here's where I'm gonna mix it up on you. Next time you exhale and drop your hips, when your hips come down, Peel your head and shoulders up off the mat. If it's okay with your neck, go up as high as you like. Remember, that's optional, okay? And inhale to come back down with your upper body. Lift your hips. So we're gonna do that a few more times. Exhale, hips down. Crunch it up like you're reaching past your knees. Inhale, upper body down, hips up. Keep it going. I want you to feel your abs wake up and I want you to feel your core getting warm. Slow and controlled is your best bet. Sometimes it's nice to challenge yourself to go a little slower than you want to. I'm gonna mix it up on you again, okay? So next time you drop your upper body, okay, your hips are down, you've come down, you're exhaling. This time with your crunch, you're gonna pull one knee in towards your chest. Inhale to a bridge, just like before. Exhale down to your crunch, just like before. Exhale a knee into your chest, okay? So inhale, bridge. Exhale, one knee crunch. And let's do this for a little while, okay? Take this a few more times. Side to side. Cultivating a little more warmth, a little more heat. Okay. 
Maybe one more time on each side. And then I'm gonna mix it up on you again. So heads up. So you're coming up into your bridge just like normal on your inhale. On your exhale, come down, crunch, just like before, this time both knees in towards your chest. Inhale to your bridge. Exhale to your crunch. Inhale to your bridge. So take a few more like this, okay? We're just gonna keep mixing it up. I'm gonna get your abs nice and warm and then we'll, we'll take a little break from all this core work. Okay, here we go. Next time you curl the knees into your chest, pause. If it's all right with your, with your neck, okay, just stay right here. Keep the head and shoulders peeled up. Remember, you can drop them anytime at all. Okay, point all your toes at the ceiling and then lower your legs to hover just off the mat, challenging your core. Pull the knees into your chest. Inhale, legs up, hover. Exhale, pull the knees into your chest. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, hover. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, maybe three more times. Try to keep your neck long two more times. Last one. Now reverse it, hover. Point up, knees in. Hover, point up, knees in. Three more times, hover, knees in. Two more. Whew, I'm feeling this, I know you are too. Okay, pause next time your knees come in. I have another challenge for you, okay? Extend your left leg, hover. Fingers by your ears. Point your right knee to the left. Turn to look to the right. So you feel that twist. You feel your obliques. Bring it back to center. Right leg extends. Left knee points to the right. Look to the left. Back to center on your inhale. Exhale. Twist again. We're going to go side to side just like this. Keep it going. You got it. Try to keep those head and shoulders up if you can. How much you decide. Three more on each side. Two more. Last one. Nice, bring it back into center. Whew. Let that go, okay. I definitely feel my abs and my core. Feels nice. Okay, let's rock it up. Rock your hair, tuck your hands behind your knees and let's come on up. And from here, you can just cross your ankles and we'll come over two hands and knees. Alrighty, let's combine a wrist stretch with a cat cow. So spinal mobility and we're also gonna get a bonus wrist stretch. So flip your palms up at you, fingers pointed back at you. And you can do one hand if that's enough. Okay, two hands if you can stand it. And here we go. Heart moves forward on your inhale, like you're just like you're doing a cow pose. You're pulling your heart forward with your hands. That's a really good stretch in the abs after we just worked them. And with your exhale, push the floor away. Just remember, one or two hands is appropriate. You can always switch halfway. As you move, remember to keep the belly button up and lift it, okay? So close your eyes. I just want you to find some really nice spinal mobility here. So I want you to roll in every direction, not just front to back. I want side to side. We want a jump roping movement. Give us some good snaky movements. And then let's meet back at a flat back and we can flip, whew, we can flip the hands back to normal. And let's get up off the wrists for a little bit after that. Tuck your toes, hover your knees, and let's walk the hands back to the feet. Let's take the feet nice and wide, okay? 
Bend your knees very generously. Oh, I'm just hanging for a little while, just swing. So I like to straighten one knee at a time and let my upper body kind of swing like a pendulum, kind of an exaggerated hang. And you might try the same. It's nice hanging traction for the low back. And if you want, you can grab your elbows if everything's going great. But definitely get your shoulders close down by your knees as much as you can. And then join your hands behind you and swing over to the left a little bit. So your left shoulder is by your left knee. And then move your hands back away. We're getting a nice shoulder opening here. How would it feel if you leaned into that left side, dropping that left shoulder by the left knee? And you can look to the right, maybe. Feel free to really bend into the left knee. Move the hands away. Mm, big breath into the chest, armpits. And let's swing it through center. Drop your right shoulder near your right knee, really bend the right knee. And let's look over to the left, kind of spiraling open in that direction. Mm. And then let's roll it back into center. Release your hands here. Drop your fingers to the floor and see if you can bring your hips all the way down, hanging just off the mat. So you might adjust the distance between your feet. And for some of us, it's easier to point the toes outward, but we're kind of working toward pointing them forward if we could, okay? So just find that happy medium for you in this nice wide squat. So bring your palms together. See if you can stick your elbows between your knees. And do your best to lengthen your spine here. Notice in particular, if your shoulders squinched up by your ears, just pull them down, lengthen that spine. So let's see if we could resist the floor a little bit. So find just how much resistance you need just to push the floor away from you. And then see if maybe you could move your knees out away from your elbows. Working that outer hip. So push the floor down, move the knees away from the elbows. See if you could maybe sink the tailbone a little more. Maybe three more breaths right here. Push down, knees wide, sink that tailbone. One more breath. Okay, and we're gonna come up slowly. So keep your heart up as you inhale and reach up. Interlace your fingers. Push your hands out to the right. Turn this into a side stretch. And with your exhale, bring it back down to a squat. See if you could leave those knees pointing way out away from each other. Let's come back up, inhaling. Interlace your fingers, push out to the left. Big right side stretch. Exhaling back down into that squat with very strong legs. Now let's do that a few more times side to side. Inhale up to one side. And exhale down to your squat. And you don't have to go all the way down, by the way. Maybe your squat is more of a, 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 knee, a knee height squat. Okay, we don't have to go super high, super far. I always feel free to interpret these movements. I kind of want you to make them your own. All right, my friends. Next time you come back down into that squat, hips are quite a bit warmer. Put your hands down and walk it forward to a plank. Okay, find your down dog from here. Walk out the heels. Take a little time. So here in your down dog, find a sense of length on all sides of your torso, from your hands to your tailbone, you're actively lengthening your spine. We wanna feel almost like the hands push the mat forward and the feet try to drag it backward. And no matter how many years of down dog one has had, there's always a little bit of work to do. There's always something you've got to be working on. So I find it's really hard to get bored with down dog. But if it's ever uncomfortable, you can always bend your knees more, 
or drop to your knees at any time. But let's get moving. Inhaling here, get your right leg up and out behind. Exhaling here, send your right foot forward. Go ahead and drop that foot between your hands and drop your back heel. The left heel has now come down. Inhaling yourself up, warrior one. Let's breathe here, warriors, for a moment. So I just want to talk about your hips. See if you could really pull your right hip back and send your left hip forward as if you're trying to line them up with the front of the mat. Okay, if that's kind of uncomfortable and just doesn't feel very spacious, try taking your right foot more to the right and your left foot more to the left. Ah, so much more space. So once you've settled in with that hip tilt, as it were, make sure your belly button is pulling in so that your tailbone is trying to point down. Okay, and we're really pressing into that left outer edge of the left foot. So I want you to give some good gas back there and think of pulling back on the right heel. Okay, that idea of always resisting the floor and always pulling inward toward the center gives us so much inner strength and stability here. So in your warrior one, big breath in, heart lifts up toward the ceiling. Okay, as you exhale, allow your heart to roll down. Go ahead and reach your hands back. See if you could drop your head and look underneath you. Okay, so inhale, roll yourself back up. Think of rolling your spine, unfurling it. And exhale, roll your spine down. Let your head hang. Hands reach up. Big shoulder movement. Can we do that one more time? Inhale, roll it up. Exhale and roll it all the way down. Okay, at the bottom with your hands up in the air, conveniently placed, go ahead and interlace your fingers and move the hands away from your head. Let's hold and breathe here. So if you need a break, you can put your hands down at any time, but we're really gonna let the legs get warm here. So push into the floor with your legs, push down. Maybe you find that if you give the floor a little resistance, it allows you to release in the hips a little more, a little active release there. Keep pushing that floor down. Maybe one more big breath in here. And then release your hands back under your shoulders. We're gonna pop up that left heel and send the right leg up and out behind. Three leg dog, right leg up and out behind. And exhale, drop that foot, walk to your hands and fall. Nice, inhaling, roll it all the way up. Exhaling, sit down into a chair squat. So your feet are hip width, dropping those hips, trying to look up. Inhale to stand, heart up. And exhale, fold. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold, exhale. All right, your palms are down. Inhale to plank, step it back. And exhale, lower yourself down slowly. See if you could take maybe a couple breaths to do it. And then on an inhale, point your tailbone at the center of the earth. Grip the mat and pull your heart up. Exhale here, find a down dog. And let's take some time and some breath here in down dog, please. Maybe close your eyes. Notice the grip on the mat with your hands. And how would it feel if you could kind of suction the center of your palm up and in toward your shoulder? How would that feel? little energetic lift. And what about a little energetic lift in the arches too? What if you could lift just the center of your arch up towards your hips, okay? And then check out your quads. If you strengthen your quads a little bit more here by lifting your kneecaps, would that allow your hamstrings to release a little more? <sighs> okay, are you ready for the second side? Inhaling here, left leg up and out behind. Exhaling, drop that foot between your hands. Boom, coming up to a warrior one. So drop the right heel. Inhale yourself all the way up. 
And see how you do just at first, revolving the hips, turning that right hip forward as we pull back on the left. And then if you need that extra space, go ahead and take it. Left foot to the left, right foot more to the right. Ah, so much more spacious. So settle in, okay? We want a lot of strength in the outer edge of the right foot. So electric energy there, pull back on the left and lift the heart. Okay, warrior one, we're fierce, okay? And we're resisting the floor while slightly pulling everything into center. And let's start to move here. So I want you to think of unrolling your spine when you're inhaling up to this warrior one. And when you exhale, you're kind of rolling your spine down. So keep it long, right? Don't just sink into it. Arms reaching up behind you. So inhaling, big shoulder, big spine movement. Lift your heart. Exhaling, roll it down. Keep it long. Can we do it one more time? Come on up. And come on down. Okay, now here's where we're gonna pause and just kind of be for a little while. So if you wanna put your fingertips down, you can. Okay, there's really no problem with that. So do that. Maybe join your hands behind you and move them away from your head. And then continue to resist the floor. I want you to play around with, maybe if I resist a little more, if I try to strengthen the legs inward towards center, press down, maybe it'll allow a little bit more release in that left hamstring, in the hip. Maybe one more big breath in here. And let it go. Drop your hands down under your shoulders. We're picking up the right heel and sending it back to down dog. All right. <laughs> Let's take a little vinyasa just to uh, clear things out, okay? Inhaling here, find a plank. And exhale, walk to your hands and fold. Roll it up, inhale. Sit down into your chair posture, exhale. You know, to stand, lift that heart maybe a little bit more. And exhale, fold. Halfway up, inhale. Very big fold on your exhale. Nice, palms are down, inhale to plank. And exhale, slowly. See if you can really slow your descent. Pull the elbows in. Maybe use your knees down on the floor. Okay, tailbone points down, inhaling into your cobra. Point the nose up. And exhaling to your down dog. Let's take five or six breaths here in this downward facing dog. Always remember you can drop your knees, okay, but it's a great posture for us, great inversion, okay? It also gives us a little bit of weight bearing on the upper body so we don't get too uh, locked up in the low body. It's a great opening for the hamstrings as well. Okay, let's continue to move around. Inhaling here, let's get the right leg up and out behind. And exhale, drop that foot, that right foot between your hands. And let's walk our hands out over to the left here. So we're in a left forward fold and I'll turn around to face you. So wide leg forward fold here. Uh, take your time making sure that your legs are comfortable. So you might take them wider or narrower. I'd like to say that they're probably about a leg length apart would be the ideal. Um, uh, width for your feet. And then make sure that your spine has space. So walk your hands enough away from your feet that your spine is as long and flat as it can be. 
And we'll use the floor as a twisting helper for ourselves here. So pushing some weight into your left hand, reach up with your right, take a big breath in and think of peeling open your chest, stacking the top shoulder, looking up. With your exhale, bring it down, switching sides. Inhaling, pushing into the right hand, the left arm peels up and open. I want you to pick the left shoulder up and open it up on top of the right. And exhale, bring it down. So nice and slow like this. With each breath, we have more expansion across the chest. Just keep breathing. Very important. I want you to keep the bottom arm active. Sometimes I find myself just kind of yanking into the bottom shoulder and it's not active. Keep the bottom shoulder active. And the best way that I've found to do that is to actively grip and push into the floor. So this amazing twist is ringing your whole spinal column and your uh, abdominal organs out. Next time you reach up with any hand, just hold right there, hold and breathe. You might keep the top arm up, okay? You might just drop it across your back and see if you can grab the thigh that's close to your hand. And if you can grab your thigh, you can kind of pull on it and deepen your twist if that's appropriate. Ask yourself if your tailbone is still pointed away from the top of your head or somewhere else. Lengthen the spine that much more. Push the floor. And then we're letting it go to switch sides. So switch sides. Here we go. Hold right here. Remember to point your tailbone away from you. And then maybe that top arm drops across your back and you can grab the thigh. If you get that thigh, pull on it. Make everything a little bit more open here. Make sure the bottom shoulder is active. One more here, one more breath. Mm. All right, let that go. All hands down. Go ahead and walk your hands back over by your right foot. And we'll step it back to a down dog. Let's take a little vinyasa. Here we go. You can always skip the vinyasas in favor of a little break if you need that a little more. So inhaling, heart moves forward to plank. Exhaling, you can hop or step to your hands. You choose. Roll it up on the inhale. And exhale, drop it into a chair posture, Utkatasana. Inhale to stand, heart comes up. And exhale, fold, hinge at your hips. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold, exhale. Palms are down. Inhale to plank so you can hop or step, yogi's choice. And exhale all the way down. Cobra on your inhale. Point your tailbone down, pull your heart up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take some breaths here. Pull everything in toward the midline. Notice that the right side feels different from the left in any way. <laughs> okay, left, left and right differences are such useful information if you're cultivating any kind of movement practice. Okay, see if you can lengthen your torso a little more. Maybe walk your fingers one inch forward and your spine is that much longer. Okay, inhaling here. Let's get the left leg up and out behind. Exhaling here, drop the left foot between your hands. Okay, let's walk the hands over to the right. Another wide leg forward fold. I'll turn around to meet you. All right, so here we are. So again, I want the feet about 
uh, leg length apart, okay? But from here, you're gonna bend your knees, grab onto your thighs, and come on up to standing. So pop your toes out and your heels in. Still about a leg length is appropriate, and we'll get down into a horse. So without further ado, um, arms out wide. You can think of facing your palms forward and opening your arms here. I like that open chest feeling, okay? And we're dropping the knees, dropping the, the hips down to the level of the knees. So come on down in your horse. So check out your knees and your toes. Make sure they're fantastically, almost ridiculously so, pointed out to the sides, okay? And I want you to feel all the tissue on the insides of your thighs gently lengthening as the tissue on the outside of the thighs contracts and pulls the legs nice and wide. So sink down low. Okay, now we're gonna play around a little bit and challenge you. So here's your first challenge. Your first challenge is to lift your right heel up nice and high and sink a little lower. So you're on your right tippy toes. Continue to resist the floor. So remember, we're not just sinking into our legs. We're resisting gently. Okay, pulling everything inward. The legs are always active. Okay, let's put the right heel down carefully. Pick the left heel up. Let's see how this goes on this side. Let go of your expectations. Push the floor and breathe. Remember to keep opening in front, strengthening in back. Okay, now what could be better than that? Try lifting both heels at the same time. Tippy toes, resist the floor with your legs. Hold and breathe. I know this is challenging, but you can do this for one more breath. Oh, relax your heels down to the ground. You can put your hands back on your thighs and rest. And then as you're ready, bring your hands back to the floor. Pop your toes in, your heels out again. And then nice fold after the, all that work in horse. You can walk your hands back between your feet and let the top of your head just hang. And just be here for a moment, okay? All of the heat we just created in your legs is now being transformed into this nice lengthening feeling. If the top of your head touches the floor, take your feet closer. <sighs> Maybe a few more breaths here. Okay, try this. See how it feels if, you, if you're feeling pretty good in your wide leg forward fold. Try to rock the weight into the outer edges of your foot and lift your toes. So play around with that. Toes up. Okay, rock the weight off of the arches and make your arches extra archy and see if maybe you could get your head to point even straighter down at the center of the earth if you do that. Now we're gonna keep your spine long. Maybe one more breath here. All right, walk yourself back up and out of this fold. And then hands back over by the left foot. And we can bring ourselves back to a down dog from here. Okay, walk it out. Let's take one last vinyasa just to seal things off, okay? Feel free to skip it and take a break. So inhaling, here's your plank. Exhaling, you might hop or step to your hands and fold. Roll it up on your inhale. Sit into a chair on your exhale. Tuck your tailbone, look up. Inhale to stand. Exhale, fold. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold, exhale. Okay, palms are down. Inhale to plank. You can hop or step one last time. Exhale all the way down one last time. And inhale up to your cobra one last time. Exhale to your down dog. Last down dog of the practice. Let's just see how it feels. Okay. 
Okay, take a big breath in your down dog. We're all evened out. We're all stretched out and warm. Hopefully it feels a lot better than the first one. All right, from here, friends, just come on down to your knees. And then you can sit your hips out to one side. Come to a seat. So let's get the right leg out long in front and we can pull the left foot in and just kind of tuck it in. But we're imagining that we're facing out toward that right foot, looking out in that direction. And you can just drop your fingers on either side of your right leg and we wanna get extra long in the spine. Now sometimes that's challenging. Okay, it feels like maybe it's, it's hard to sit up straight. In that case, put a bend in your right knee, okay? And just pretend like it's pretend like it's long, but notice how that gives you extra space. So even if you can fully extend your knee, I do want to put a little micro bend in the knee and strengthen that quad to top of the right thigh for sure. Okay, pull that kneecap in towards your hips. So we'll start folding here. This is going to be our fold. So you might just stay here with your fingers under your shoulders, focusing on having a long spine on the inhale. And with your exhales, move your heart maybe a millimeter closer to your right big toe, which is also trying to touch your heart. It's flexing in your direction. Okay, it doesn't really matter how far you fold, but you're looking for some nice sensation of opening across the back of your right leg. So on the calf, um, in the hamstring, you might come down to your elbows. <sighs> And if all is going well, you might want to drop your head. So go ahead and drop your head, but keep your neck long, okay? <sighs> Remember to keep the leg active. You're still resisting the floor. Okay, take your time rolling yourself up and out of this and then just grab your left knee and point it up. And you can use both arms around the left knee to squeeze it in as you try to sit up tall here. And then we'll turn this into a twist. So we'll just use the right arm to hold the left knee and we'll look over the left shoulder. Use your left fingers behind you to make yourself a little taller. Breathe. So we want long spine on the inhale, as always, when we're twisting. On your exhale, see if you could press into the left hip, pull your belly button to your spine, and twist a little more from the belly button up. If you want a little more here, you can take the right elbow to the outside of the left knee and keep going, keep twisting. All right, let's revolve ourselves out of that one and we'll just switch sides. Come on out. So this time the left leg will be the long leg. The right foot will just pull in and we'll step on the left thigh. And we're kind of facing off toward the left foot. So you want your long spine. So maybe you're bending your left knee, totally fine. But activate the left leg, micro flex, ankle flexed. Let's go, okay. So remember you're gently resisting the floor still. Long spine, inhale. Heart moves forward, exhale. Okay. You don't really have to fold that far to get some really nice opening in the back of the left leg. So don't ever feel like you have to go farther than is pleasant. Okay. Should always be happy. Should never feel stress on your mat. I'm gonna keep your neck long. Everything is long. 
pushing against the floor. Maybe one more breath. And let's walk it back up and transition into that twist. So we can pick the right knee up and just point it up. Both arms can hug the right knee. Just take a moment to sit up tall. And notice that to sit up evenly here, you kind of have to push a little extra into the right hip. So root extra in the right glute. And then we'll twist. So the left arm is gonna hold the right knee. You look over that right shoulder Right fingers make you a little taller. It's a long spine, inhale, push into the right hip. Belly button to spine, exhale. Maybe that left elbow comes to the outside of the right knee and you twist a little more deeply. But remember the length, the length is so crucial in the spine. We want that extra space, don't we? Okay, untwist yourself from this. And then lengthen both legs. And let's see how slowly we can roll down. Okay, so round your spine, point your tailbone forward, reach forward, belly button pulls back. With your longest spine, slowly rolling down. Let's just see what happens. I try to think of rolling three breaths or three vertebrae per breath. All right, as you finally uncurl, relax, breathe through your nose, close your eyes. It is time to rest and you earned it. Great work. Good for you for making time to take care of yourself. I know it's not easy. Let go of all control over your breath or your body here, your thoughts too, let go. I invite you to spend these next few moments just existing, trusting that for this time, everything is going as it should. You are safe, you can just exist. With each exhale, let a little bit more tension go. Anything that remains will just drip off of your body, back down to the earth. Please keep resting just like this for as long as you can. Thank you so much for joining me.